When football fans are asked to name outstanding players, they usually talk of goal scorers who bask in the glory when the ball hits the back of the net. They're often seen as the most important players on the pitch, securing the points and exciting the crowd. There's Gascoigne! If you ask many Rangers fans to name a player as important as any striker, they wouldn't pick a top goalscorer. They would pick Rangers' greatest ever goalkeeper, Andy Gorham. Foley challenge as well. McStay's there for Celtic. That's good play by McStay. The chance is up for Collins. That's a magnificent save by Andy Gorham. Andy's Rangers career began in 1991 after new manager Walter Smith had taken Rangers to the third championship in a row on the last day of the season. However, Rangers had previously expressed interest in the Hibs keeper during an unusual meeting with the previous manager, Graham Souness. I thought I was going to go the season before. Graham Souness pulled me at um, some, it was some, I think it was a dinner in Glasgow and asked if I would like to play for Rangers. And we, we, we obviously had a few drinks. It was a, it was a question of sport in Glasgow. That's what it was. Mm. And I said, but, "Aye, everyone would do it, but aye, of course I do." And that was it. He walked away. I went, well, "Come back then, <laughs> ask me." And it was, it was just a strange situation. Mm. And um, I used to watch Chris, Chris Woods. He'd, he'd have one save a game to make. I thought I fancy a bit of that. That's the game. I used to come off the pitch absolutely knackered. Absolutely soaking, black, ranting and raving after a game because we get beat. And um, I was certainly jealous at the time. I, think, I, I fancy a bit of that. That one save a week, that's, that'll do me. But like many before him, Andy found that playing for Rangers was not to be as easy as he thought. His start at the club was not to be as happy as he expected. And I think even Andy had met a couple of errors in the, in the first couple of games, one at Sparta Prague and one at Hearts, that uh, obviously cast an element of doubt uh, among supporters who had liked Chris Woods because he had been very consistent for us in a five-year period. So, you know, there was a little question mark placed over him. But I think Andy soon realised that, uh, that Rangers were spotlights on him and that uh, he had to be very careful. And what was important for me wasn't the errors, it was his reaction to it. That was my first experience at the, the marble staircase with Walter. Um, he gives it the usual, he, he doesn't come in and rant and rave. He walks in the dressing room and you get the nod. As soon as he walks in the dressing room, he looks at you and he goes, and then you know. And he just explained everything about the club, what he wanted, what he expected, what the fans probably expected, the chairman, everybody went right through the whole thing. And that was a big turning point in my career at Rangers. I then realised 100% exactly what it was all about. And uh, to be fair, from there went from strength to strength. Andy realised what the old firm games mean to the supporters. In August 1991, he played in his first Celtic clash. Those fixtures were to become the mainstay of his reputation at Ibrox. You can't explain the build-up to it. I think the two games before the old firm game, there was a couple of situations where I could have come for a cross. Or I remember one, there was a ball come through the middle, and it was a 50-50 thing, and normally it's big daft goalies out and does his bit. And I hesitated for a second. Still end up going getting there and end up in a in a smash with a boy. But I had that one second I hesitated. I hesitated because I was thinking about the old firm game. I didn't want to get injured for the old firm game. All the boys said is you'll enjoy it and it's good. It'll pass you by in two seconds and fighting and everything. And you think, I can't be that bad. A million percent right. Taking the ball on the ground. There's Derek White stepping away from Ferguson. Nicholas is brought down by Nisbet. It's a fine effort by Nicholas. Excellent goalkeeping by Andy Gorham. He must have seen this very late indeed. And the Scotland goalkeeper getting across to his left very swiftly indeed as that was bending in at the corner. Coin was well read by Goff. McCall 
Here's Hastley. He's in the clear. It's a great chance for Rangers. Hastley against Bonner. Brilliant play from Hastley. Rangers take the lead. Red flick on there, the chance on now for Cascarino. Brilliantly saved by Gorham. Cascarino's head flick, Trenny's return on the volley. Cascarino had that very well indeed. It was beautifully saved by Roland. Well, it's played on well by Hatley for Johnston. Here's Hatley again, switching to his left foot. It's a second for Rangers. It's Mark Hatley once again. Ironically, it was Pat Bonner who took Andy aside in the players' lounge after the match to give him some advice about the pressure of playing for the old firm. Looking back at it all now, I wish I hadn't. <laughs> I hadn't said too much to him because it, I think from that he went on and uh, started to play so well for Rangers. I just felt sorry for him. Uh, I wish I didn't <laughs> say too much to him because he went on and, and broke our hearts on many occasions. And uh, I think at that time it was just a case of over a pint sitting down and saying, listen, you know, um, things will get better if you work hard at your game. And uh, I was at the club at Celtic for a you know, number of years before him and I knew what it took to play at old firm level. Um, and it's a special type of game. Uh, it's different than playing with maybe hearts or, or hibs or anything. The pressures are much different. Um, and it was just a little bit of advice. Um, as I say, I wish I hadn't said too much, but uh, he went on to be a tremendous goalkeeper, both for, you know, for Rangers and, of course, for Scotland. There's Craney, setting it up for Galloway. Queuing up in the middle for this. Here's Collins, setting it up for Paul McStay. The great ever by McStay, and the save from Andy Gorham denies the Celtic captain. He was under more scrutiny than he was when he was at Habs for all. So, therefore, he had to be on top of his game in every match, and I think it was good for him. A lot of people might have crumbled under that, but um, I think he flourished, and I think that pressure put an extra edge on him and kept him at a terrific level. And I've got to say that uh, after the initial one or two errors in the first month or so that he was at Rangers, you would have to look maybe five years down the line before you could finger him for another one. And I think that that is probably the most remarkable, or one of the most remarkable pieces of consistency I've seen in any player at any time. He was one of those guys since when he came to the club, he got very easily led into the, the whole tradition and, and everything that went on in the background from Ranger Football Club, which is now going away a bit from the club. Uh, whether it be a good thing or a bad thing, that's that's up to Andy's opinion. But uh, Andy loved that side of it, and obviously the Celtic game was the biggest game of the season. He just reveled in it. He just seemed to love the whole atmosphere, and and uh, and it made him stand out even more than a, than, than than normal, which is something special because his normal standard was was exceptional and high, as we said before. Already in his first season. Andy was stamping his authority on the team by instilling confidence in the players in front of him. The whole squad knew they could rely on him in any situation. When you knew Andy was behind you, then you, you knew you were on the safe hands. Uh, every player that I played with, uh, you just felt comfortable. He could handle the back pass, um, could take it on the day, can distribute it. Um, but his, his reflexes were second to none. Um, would be... Uh, the best goalkeeper I've I've seen in my uh, in my lifetime. It's great for the a defence in front of a to have a goalkeeper behind you that you can trust. I never had the, the opportunity to play with Andy Ibrox, but I certainly did at Scotland, and I know that with that guy behind us, we could do our own job, and there was no need to worry or sit deep or defend an area where we felt that we couldn't trust the goalkeeper. Total trust in that guy. Scoring men forward again, it's Robertson in possession. The chance on for Derek Ferguson. Great save by Gorham. By the end of the season, Andy had fully justified his £1 million signing fee from Hibs. Rangers had scored 101 league goals and lost only five times in 44 games. 
The party was about to start against St Mirren. I remember, the, I think it was St Mirren at home. We won the league. I belted the ball up the middle of the park. Coyce ran onto it and scored. And it, again, I brought you win the league. Yeah, great feeling. And of course, posing no problem there for Andy Gorham. McCoy is going through here, the ball holding up in the breeze. And McCoy is going to score. Me and Coyce and Durant went to, I think we did three supporters clubs that night. It was, and it was just mental chaos. My first experience, and it was just absolute pandemonium. A great experience, you know, it was great. And then when we came back to the house, it was just a feeling you've never, you never feel anything like it. I remember we were sat in the, in the, in the bottom got a corner of the garden, me and Coisey. It was about two, three in the morning, and we got a bottle of champagne each. And like two gnomes sat, and we were just, you're the best player in the world. You're the best goalie in the world. And we just went through all the, the daft things, you know. And uh, th that went on until six, seven in the morning. Never forget, he was dancing with his whole session. Uh, we just all had a great time. It? it was then we realised, do you want more of that? You had a wee smell of it, you wanted to really get stuck into it and have a, a right good go. The next season was regarded by many as the best in the club's recent history. In season 92-93, Rangers won the treble and were unbeaten in 10 games in Europe. For Andy, it was the incredible bond within the squad which made the team so successful. This is great play by McCall. Faithfully lays it off, it's Ferguson! That is a brilliant call by Rangers! People say the relationship between the, the defence and the, and the goalkeeper is always important. People said, that, oh, you must have known exactly what they were going to do. Of course you knew what they were going to do. I think the secret then was I knew exactly what they wasn't going to do. They weren't going to get themselves out in a, in a stupid situation to leave someone else exposed. You know, they weren't going to get dragged out and leave a hole. John Brown added that wee bit extra. Uh, you put your house on and make an attack when it's needed. Two different players. Coffey is obviously very quick, clever up, upstairs. And I'm not saying that Bomber's stupid. Maybe. Only because he's down that end of the camera, he can't get me. And Bomber just came and made tackles. It was unbelievable. He was a great influence in the dressing room. You know, a real winner. Terry Butcher type boy, I would imagine. And uh, it just all clicked. It was, it was a season, certainly, where we weren't going to be getting beat by, by anybody. There were many matches during that remarkable season when Rangers had their 44-game unbeaten run which stand out in the supporters' memories. The Celtic games are the obvious choice. However, for Andy, a game against Aberdeen brought out the passion which ran through every player at the club. That's an excellent save by Andy Gorham from Ian Jess. Kane, looking for the head of Patalainen. Person's claiming he was pushed. The three allowing play to go on. Patalainen getting in the cross. Headed away by Goff, only as far as Aitken. And Ryan can score a sensational goal for Aberdeen. We were 1-0 down at half-time. Roy can hit a volley from 20 yards. And I thought Spackett should have been closer to him. And I said that to him on the pitch. And he's turned around and, and give me a gesture, which it's, a, it's an unwritten law at Ibrox, you don't do that in front of 50,000. And he repeated it. Blood's boiling a wee bit. We're getting beat 1 0. Roy Aitken scores, Celtic boy. So you're not at the best frame of mind anyway, you know? And we came in half time. And I said, just bust, you flip sometimes. We've all done it. I said, you ever say that again, I'll kill you. And he, he said something else. When we went up going, we had a bit of a stramash of, we had a bit of a fight with him, and uh, we came out in one three one. So probably that was the answer. <laughs> <laughs> now the fans getting more behind them. John Brown still well forward. Chess it down to Durant. Akelichenko. Durant. Oh, wonderful goal by Ian Durant. <laughs> Gary Smith's free kick aimed at the head of Patalainen. Out of the way though by McPherson. Now it's Durant. Good ball through to Ali McCoyst, who's on site. McCoyst! 2-1 to Rangers! <laughs> it's 
Mikhailichenko. It's only natural because you care about the club. You care about what you're doing. I think the boys go through the, the lives in, in training and games and don't have a fight with anybody. And they, they probably don't care probably as much as they should do because you're going to have feelings about what people say and what people do on the pitch. The challenge for Celtic that year was as desperate as ever, but the strength and determination of the Rangers team would prove too much for the Parkhead side. Again, Andy's contribution to those matches was outstanding. Terrific shot. It's a shot one from McStay. Marvellous save by Andy Gorham from Darius Dovchek. Andy Gorham taking every advantage, finds Hitley. In comes Dale Gordon. Ali McCoy there. Here's Ian Durant. Ian Durant scores for Rangers. And that's Colin stepping in for Celtic. This is Slater. Good play by Slater. Can he get his first goal for Celtic? Play is out. Hitley nips in there just ahead of Mowbray. This is Boyd. And Andy Gorham. A terrific save again. Well, Stuart Slater just cannot believe it. Tom Boyd got in the cross. What a terrific effort that was from Slater. He might easily have had a hat trick in the second half. Now checks Carnot. Punched away by Gorham. Turned by Collins. Breaks out now to Peter Grant. Rangers under siege. This is Paul McStay. The chance on now for Gillespie, and again, Andy Gorham defies Celtic. 92-93, that season was just ridiculous. We'd be 2-0 down, we knew we were going to win 3-4-2. Um, I remember turning around to Goffey one, one, one day, we won 4-2. We're coming off the pitch, we just turned around. We, said, we can do what we want. We could give a, a, a team two goals start, we know we're going to win. That attitude was crucial when Rangers met English champions Leeds United in the Champions League qualifier at Ibrox. But the start was not what the Ibrox fans wanted. And a brilliant start for Leeds, Gary McAllister. Silencing the Ibrox crowd in the most effective way. The corners came over, it's getting knocked out McCarthy, we've all it in the top corner. It's a strange one to say, but it was deafening silence. There's other people say, well, they can't do that. We need to start again. That's not in the script. We need to start again. No. And then um, we we're just looking at each other. What, what's happened there? And it was just a shock, total shock. It's up to Lukic. Oh, and he's fisted it into his own net. The crowd certainly played a massive part that night. It was a fantastic atmosphere. Um, no lead fans here. And it was just all night singing, getting behind us. And, Typical, typical derby type game, you know, with blood and thunder all night, and we, we managed to get the goals back. And McCoy. Rangers get the lead. All the English wrote us off after that. They, they said, oh, just a case of three and four when they come down. All the boys are up for the second game. We couldn't wait for that. And the boys wanted to play, and then he just let us get him. And we were totally, totally focused and, and really, really confident. I think we were the only confident ones. We were a lot going into it. to talk about the BFG boot flick goal. It's normally me kicking out, Big Mark gets a touch and Koisi scores. I boot it out and Ian Durant wins a header. Must have come off his ear, I think. So anyway, Durant gets a flick to it and Big Mark warps it and um, that's his back in the game. The victory that night by two goals to one was a vindication of Rangers' tactics and spirit, despite immense pressure from a side fielding many internationalists. Andy stood firm. Stracker, played in for Cantona, a nice turn by him, and Cantona's finish is stopped superbly by Gorham. All night we got a bit of a pound in, and Bomber and Goffey were absolutely fantastic that night. Defensively, as a unit, we were great, but Bomber and Goffey were, were outstanding that night. 
I've made saves. And uh, it was just one of the nights again, you knew it was all going to go right for you. Here's Canton up. Here's a chance. Brilliantly stopped again. Hit with awesome power there by Canton up. For Alan Hodgkinson and his goalkeeping coach, the match was memorable for another reason. I always remember getting a phone call on the Sunday morning, and uh, it was Howard Wilkinson, who was the then manager of the England under-23 side. And he said, Alan, he said, uh, I need a goalkeeper. I said, well, you've, what about the sub-goalie you've got there, the, the number two, the boy Gorham at, uh, at Oldham? He said, no, Alan, he said, I've just had a training session with him. He said, no, I said, well, I don't fancy him. And there was nobody more delighted to be sat in the director's box at Leeds. And knowing Howard Wilkinson very, very well, um, going to Leeds and winning 2-1, and Andy Gorham playing outstanding. And I always remember Howard Wilkinson saying to me then, he said, I remember Alan when I didn't take him for England. He could have been an England goalkeeper. It, was, it really was one of these special nights. We came off the bus and the, the gaffer got us all together. And we thought, no, he's gonna, he can't come around and say no, nobody's going out. And he says, team meeting. It's gonna be one of the nights we're gonna end up staying in a hotel. And he turned around and he says, yeah, the flight's at say, nine o'clock, I think it was. He says, anybody who doesn't get on a flight doesn't get the bonus. And I think we were getting something like 25 grand a man for that game. Anyone who doesn't get on a flight, don't get the bonus. Go and do what you want. <laughs> Massive relief for the boys and we're all out. Again, the boys together after winning. The, the old saying, you win as a team, lose as a team. And uh, we certainly took it to the extremes. When we won as a team, we took it to the extremes. When we lost as a team, it was, it was pretty dis depressing. But thankfully, the, the latter didn't happen too much. By then, Rangers had already won their first silverware when they again met Aberdeen in the Skull Cup final. 90 minutes were not enough to separate the two teams, who would later fight it out for the league championship. So that's a good clearance by Stephen Wright. The call plays it to McCoy, to Durant, some lovely close play here by Rangers. What? Alex McCall, Stuart McCall, what a blunder in the Aberdeen defence. Rangers had a real test of character the other night. Now Aberdeen has won, but it's Ian Jess getting away from Richard Goff. Will he go it alone here? Oh, terrific stop by Andy Gorham. Mixes Patalainen was in the far side. There's Patalainen again. Well, a terrific stop there by Andy Gorham. He's one of the best truck stoppers in the game. This is Ian Jess now. Trying to take on Robertson. Still Jess getting in the cross and well handled by... Andy Gorham, he did well to get in that uh, cross, Ian Jess. It's uh, not easy to get away from David Robertson in that type of situation. So here's McCall now for Rangers. To Durant. Robertson's breaking in the left. He fires in the cross, Hitley's in there. And the ball's in the back of the net. Four months later, the two teams would meet again in the league at Pitodre. It was vital for Rangers to win, as a defeat would allow Aberdeen's title hopes to soar. So Paul Mason will take this. We should open up. Fine header there by Patalainen. An excellent save from Gorham. Andy Gorham looking a little bit perplexed about the way in which Patalainen got to this header. He was free. Blows it that down to the corner, it's great goalkeeping. Chances on through the middle, it's brilliant goalkeeping by Gorham. Scott Booth can't believe that. Richardson with a free kick, McLeish has gone forward, so is Irvin. Matalainen nodding it across. And a great save again from Gorham. Ian just holds his head, he can't believe it. Well, and you go them undoubtedly. The Rangers here on the first half. So a chance for David Robertson, perhaps, to play this left-footed. 
There he goes. Straight against the wall. Stephen sends it back in. There's Hakeley. It's in. Rangers have scored. It's the sucker blow from Rangers. I think a patch of form there with probably I wouldn't equal again. There's a string of 10, 12 games there where everything I did was perfect. And then end of the game was a couple of minutes ago to get a free kick, hits the wall. Goes back to the boys, hit it through the wall again this time. And I've gone again, it's gone through my hands, hit my backside and stuck on the line. I thought it was in the net, I'll just turn around, it's just sat on the line right there. I think that summed up there, you can make all the saves you want, but it's only a bit of luck. But Andy's luck was beginning to run out. Serious injury problems arose when he had to have a tendon in his knee replaced, which meant he would be out for eight months. I thought my career had finished. Then. I'd never had an operation, I didn't know what it was all about. And uh, couldn't dress myself. I was in a brace. Couldn't dress myself, couldn't undress myself, couldn't go in a shower. Spent days depressed for days. The doc, he's seen it all before. He does his best to try and get you going in that way. It's a, it's a fearsome thing, it's a, it's a, it's a frightening thing. I've, I've never experienced anything like it. They get a dead man's Achilles, apparently, and split it in three and plait it like hair. They take the ligament out and put that in, the dead man's Achilles. So I'm thinking, I hope this boy's a, a high jumper or something, we'll be up for crosses a bit better. <laughs> and uh, it worked. Touch wood, I never had any, any more problems with it. Any football player who has an injury is very, very hard to live with and very hard to to control if they are so keen on the game of which they play. And he was a very, uh, at that particular time, and he was very studious uh, in goalkeeping. And obviously it was a big shock to the system that he weren't out there playing. But uh, obviously uh, Andy came back and, uh, you know, got fit again and, uh, and played uh, very, very well. Yes, Ervin, that's a good ball in. Headed away by Brown, turned by Lambert, this is Tommy Coyne, onto the left foot, it's Phil O'Donnell! It's a great save by Andy Gorham, what a chance there for Phil O'Donnell. Nick Cleland, Bowen coming in on the far side, and Gorham just touching that onto the post. During that game, misfortune was to strike again. After playing only eight league matches, Andy was taken off with an injured hip. He was given leave by Walter Smith to go on holiday to Tenerife with his family, hoping he would recover in time for the cup final. The holiday nearly cost him his Rangers career. Well, on the last day, we were flying out at 5 o'clock the next morning. So all of them had just been relegated at the time. Unbeknown to me, they're in Tenerife. And I just hear a shout, goalie. Sure enough, there's the old boy sat. I said, see, you go down to the beach, I'll have a couple of drinks with me. I said, I'll be down a wee while. So you go through all the old stories again, you having a laugh with all the old boys that you've not seen for a long time. And uh, sure enough, they come flying back up about five at night. The family that's been on the beach, been with them all day, it's been a great day. So the usual, you go up there and I'll be up in 10 minutes, we'll go something to eat. Sure enough, next thing I remember, I woke up at about two o'clock the next afternoon in the hotel. The boy called Mike Milligan, I was in his room, and it was just panic. Oh my God, two o'clock in the afternoon, missed a flight. I got a pair of shorts on, a t-shirt, a pair of flip-flops, and 40 quid in my pocket. So now it's real panic. What we're gonna do? So, um, sure enough, I've missed a flight. So I've no idea what's happened now, what am I gonna do? So I end up having another week there. Uh, again, at the time, it's, it seemed like a good idea at the time. And uh, obviously it wasn't when I came back in and found out the consequences. The consequences were that Andy was summoned to Walter Smith's office for a meeting. And he looked at me and said, I'm putting you on a transfer list. <laughs> and I looked back at him and he still had this deadpan face. I thought, he's going to crack a wee smile in a minute. He's only kidding me on. Uh -huh. He said, I'm putting it on the list. He said, I'm not putting up with that. And then it really dawned on me that it was serious. And I, that, that just sent me bombshell one. That was just total devastation. There was just a lot of things. I just felt like everything else. Sometimes when you, you have a long run of success as they had, 
in, in that period of time. But everybody needed a reminder that, you know, they had to try and keep themselves right. Um, we were serious in that one. A lot of people said to me that they, you know, they, they'd only did it for an effect. But uh, if somebody had came along at that time, I seriously we, we would have done that. Panic. Not afraid to say it. tears, though, but it was my life. I loved it there. Loved the club. It was a great job. And I abused the situation and got probably what I deserved. The rest of the team were due to fly to Canada for a closed season tour of supporters' clubs. Andy was keen to go, mainly to escape the Scottish press, but Walter Smith's words of caution were still fresh in his mind. I remember his, his last words about when we came out of the dressing room, he says, uh, out of the office. He says, look, whatever you, whatever you do, be discreet, because the press are going to be after you. So that, that stuck in my mind, be discreet, be discreet, be discreet, always in my mind. There's three white stretch limousines waiting for us outside the airport. Full of drink. And he'd take us to the hotel and like, be discreet, be discreet. You walk out the airport, you see the cars and you just go, forget it. <laughs> Done in. The gaffer's words just went right out the window. And that was it. Andy did buckle down and regained his fitness over the summer and was eventually taken off the transfer list. Right with McWilliams. Fine effort by McWilliams. Oh, it looks as though Andy Gordon got a touch to that, which makes it a magnificent save. The corner kick's been given. Clark just strikes it. And it's a marvellous save by Andy Gorham. Superb reflexes by Gorham as David Weir sent in the shot. Superb save. A newcomer arrived at Ibrox that season, who was to become a hero to thousands of Rangers fans for his skill, flair and tremendous match-winning abilities. Loudrup, and he's got McCoyst, he's got Hadley, away up on the right. He decides to go into one, brilliant play by Loudrup! Oh, a magnificent goal! A magnificent goal! Few fans would have predicted that such different personalities as Gorham and Loudrup would form such a close friendship, which would continue even after they left Ibrox. Perhaps that's, uh, that's the key uh, word to it because uh, we are very different and we have got perhaps different lifestyles but one thing we have got in common is we like wine and uh, that's, uh, um, that's a good start anyway and we have had some, some, you know, uh, some good times really and uh, he's, I must say he's the, the only player I've been in contact with uh, on a, perhaps on a weekly basis or a monthly basis since I left Scotland so um, and um, so it's good still to, to keep in, in touch and, and, you know, go out for a meal uh, once in a while. And, and we have done that, and uh, hopefully we can keep on doing that. If you know you've got a great goalkeeper behind you, then, uh, you know, you've got a lot more confidence, obviously. And the players can go forward and think, OK, if anything happens, we've always got uh, the goalie uh, behind us. And, uh, and he's such a good goalkeeper that uh, he, he, you know, the, the confidence in the team just spreads out from, from the back to, uh, uh, to the strikers. And this is Loudrop. Nice first touch from McCoy to Jury. House is in the middle. McCoy arriving. Loudrop's here as well. Still it's Loudrop. Great skills again by him. Oh! Nicknamed the Flying Hippo by his teammates, Andy's appearance can be deceptive, but his presence in the penalty box can be enough to wrong foot strikers when faced with his abilities. When you look at him, he, he doesn't really look at, uh, as an athlete, to be honest, but uh, I've never seen uh, as good as goalie. I, I've, said, I've said before that uh, the two best goalkeepers I've played with uh, were Peter Michael and, uh, and Andy Gorham. So that puts him, you know, among the best in the world, uh, according to, to my opinion. And um, I think he's been, been excellent. And he's so quick, as I said before, and, um, you know, he's really difficult to beat. There's no doubt when, when a forward goes through and he sees a, a certain goalkeeper, he'll finish with aplomb, no problem. But if they go through and they know that Andy Gorham's there, then they'll say, well, wait a minute, you know, second thoughts about it. And that just may be the thing that throws them off their, you know, their, their, their finishing touch. Next picks up the loose ball. 
Collins to his left. McStay going in alone. It's a great save from Gorham. Superb midfield play from Paul McStay. And Gorham comes to the rescue of Rangers. Gavin Hoydon under pressure there from McLaren. McStay picks up the loose ball. Vata free on the right. McStay again. That's for Vata. Good position for Celtic. Now Paul McStay. The great save again from Gorham. McStay can scarcely believe it. Goalie challenge as well. McStay's there for Celtic. That's good play by McStay. The chance is up for Collins. That's a magnificent save by Andy Gorham. Rangers went on to win their seventh championship in a row, leaving Celtic trailing by 18 points in fourth place. To Andy, such success was a long way from his beginnings in the game. His father had played in goal for Bury and Hibbs, and like all fathers, was a great influence on Andy. He never pushed me. I think he would have, he would have pushed me into football. I'd have probably rebelled and gone the other way if you were a kid and you get pushed into something, then the natural thing is to rebel against it, you don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. He was always there if I needed him. And um, obviously I always want to follow any father's footsteps, it's an old saying, but it was just the, the father figure thing that always stuck in my mind. Plus the fact that, um, you were right, I was rubbish outfield, so <laughs> I just ended up in goal. After being signed by Ron Atkinson for West Bromwich Albion at 17, Andy moved on to Oldham. It was at that time he first worked with coach Alan Hodgkinson, but Alan's first impressions of Andy were not what he expected. I went across and watched this reserve game during the evening, and the game proceeded, and he proceeded to concede eight goals. And I always remember Joe Royal uh, tapping me on the shoulder and saying that, uh, ah, but he's coming back from uh, injury, Alan, and... Uh, you know, he's not normally like this, so you'll have to accept that a little bit. And that was the first time I'd ever seen Andy Gorham. Eventually, their relationship went on to become one of the most successful in coaching, but the early sessions did not run smoothly. First two weeks training with him, I couldn't get a, a grip of what he was talking about. I couldn't understand his techniques, what he was trying to do, and I'd get frustrated. I dropped the ball, picked it up and belted it down the pitch. It was a windy day at Oldham, so I ended up three million yards away. I said, Andy, you see that ball you've kicked down the pitch, uh, down there? I said, off you go and go and get it. Walk down there and go and fetch it back. And he looked at me. I said, no. I said, don't walk down. I said, run down there and get the ball back. Or off you go back in the dressing room. And off he went, ran and got the ball. And then from then on, it was plain sailing. He got down to work. And at that particular time, he really was a little bit impetuous. As a kid, you think I'm the great I am, you know, you're 17 playing for Oldham's first team. Might not be a big thing to other people now, but at the time you think you're, you're the top boy. He made me go and get the ball and he said, yeah, ever do that again, I'll, and I'll never work with you again. And that was it, ever since then we've been together. In 1987, Andy was signed for Hibs by Alex Miller. Again, he was under pressure as he was the club's biggest ever signing. My learning process was more or less over then, mm -hmm. I thought at the time. Obviously, I never stopped learning. I thought it's a time to really enjoy it, and I've made it now. Obviously, again, naive. At the same time, we, we did well at the time, to, to be honest as well. We got into Europe a couple of times, and a couple of semi-finals. It was diff totally different than I used to get. Probably 12, 15, 20 saves a game. And if I made a mistake, it didn't matter, because I'd, I'd pull the team out with the saves I'd made anyway. So it, it, it tended to hide up the mistakes. Well, at Rangers, it's totally different. You, know, you need to make that one, that one save that's required. And if you don't make it, then you ask questions. So it's a totally different ball game that way. But certainly, again, another, another good upbringing there. By 1995, Rangers had their sights firmly set on nine in a row. Andy's injury problems were over, and Rangers had just signed another player who was to become a hero to the loyal supporters. And why don't reach in the middle? Good cross though, one easily by McLaren. Two against two up front here. Selenko and McCoy's together. That's good play by Selenko. McCoy's this Gascoigne racing through the middle. It's great play for Rangers. And Gascoigne has scored! It's a magnificent goal by Gascoigne! 
Walter. He must have had nightmares about Gascoigne joining us. That's a good thing at Ibrox, you know, no one ever really got that accolade. If you had a great game on a Saturday, all during the week you'd get slaughtered off the boys, Johnny and Coisey, and people would just bring him back down to level. Likewise, if you had a bad game, they'd lift you up and, and get you back playing again, you'd be back confident. But he brought a new, new dimension to the dressing room and the, and the pitch. We were just looking forward to seeing him play because we all knew he was a, a great, great player. This is Jury coming off his marker well. Alec Dillon on the near side. Karachenko in space. Gascoigne going through a chance here to score. And that's a brilliant finish by Gascoigne. Once a decade, he gets top side. And uh, one boy that could change a game for us, no doubt. And I still believe, whether Walton and the chairman agrees with me or not, eh, doesn't matter because it's my video and I can say it. I think when Gascoigne went by eight games to go, that cost us the league in the cup double. I think we'd have won the double that year if, uh, if Gascoigne hadn't gone, because we certainly missed him the last eight games. And it was, uh, sorry, Gaffer and uh, Mr Chairman, but... I think that I think we would have kept him for the eight games would have, would have been okay. Andy's own form was outstanding that season. Once again, he proved his worth against his closest rivals. There's Van Hoydel. Great save by Gorham. A brilliant free kick that by Van Hoydel, swerving in the far corner. And Gorham gave it full stretch to get to that. Corner kick will be taken by Donnelly. Again, coming to punch this time. Winning the championship by eight and nine was the games that we had to beat Celtic. And in every game he played in, he was outstanding. And if you look at what, 12 times, 12 points, he won us 10 of them. He got us 10 of those points, without a doubt. A chance, though, for Celtic. Andreas Tom, Rudy Vata has scored against Rangers on a free kick at the end of the last season. And John Collins makes a habit of it. He's over the ball. There's Collins. Magnificent save from Gorham. He hates getting beat. He's like me. He hates getting beaten training. And if you put one past him, give him a bit of stick, he loses his head and he goes off it. Just having him behind you. You know, he's a leader from behind. He doesn't have to be captain. Um, but he's our captain at the back, behind the back. And uh, he's just solid. It's Woodthorpe who gets it away now for Dodge to chase. It drops in behind Goff, who's under pressure here. Delitz Dodge, playing it through, trying to find Booth, but uh, overheading it. And now it's Robertson stepping in for Rangers. There's a real chance here for Aberdeen to do something. And Goff had let the ball drop in behind him, and now it's McLaren making a mistake. And this is Scott Booth, and Dodge is in the middle. And well taken by Andy Gorham. It had to be. But again, self-inflicted wounds by Rangers, giving the ball away. Scott Booth pounced. Dodge was in the middle, and uh, Gorham reacted well. Let's Heatherson leaving it now to little Joe Miller who does well. He gets a bit of space here. It's back for Dodds. And it's Petrich who got his foot to the ball. And then Robertson cleared it high near. It's still not properly cleared. And then comes Glass. And uh, Stephen Glass's head out goes right into the arms of Andy Gorham, who's not at all happy with his defence. Still the danger wasn't cleared, and Glass was given an opportunity. He's waiting for this free kick. It's there by Rangers, and it's Craig Moore who scores. Oh, they're mental. They're all mental for a start. Never going to have a chance with a goalkeeper, especially Andy Gordon, because you always come off worse. Um, but they've got to be more mentally and physically prepared for a game. You know, we can, I can, I can make a mistake, um, but I've got another nine players to help us out from that. Andy can it. As a keeper, you cannot make a mistake full stop. That consistency was never more evident than in one of the most memorable old firm clashes in recent years. In a game balanced on a knife edge, Andy was simply breathtaking. Good possession again, that's good play by Simon Donnelly. Stepping away from David Robertson, infield now to McStay. Donnelly keeps his run going. Still it's Donnelly, back to McStay. Good play by Celtic, Van Hoydonk! And it's Andreas Tom! from Richard Goff, this is Gascoigne, still it's Gascoigne, forcing it through, chance on here for Loudrop, and it's a great goal by Loudrop, 
Rangers one. Celtic one. Again, there's a fair bit of movement the far side of the box. Gascoigne strikes it in. With the score standing at 2 all, Celtic turned up the pressure. Only the goalie stood between them and victory. Played off by Tom, it's Collins again. Good play by Collins. Tom, a nice change of direction, challenged by Goff. This is Tosh McKinley, that's a great cross. What an incredible save by Andy Gorham from Van Hoydonk. That's Tom. Getting in a good cross, in comes Tosh McKinley, another big gap opens up, and Gorham's in again. The tie ended 3-3, but once again, Andy's performance had arguably saved the match for Rangers. Well, I played with Andy as well, I had a spell at Oldham when Andy was there. He saved the only penalty I've ever missed in my career, which was for Man City. In my opinion, Andy Gorham's the best goalkeeper I've ever seen, and I, and I was quite open saying that, and I've, I've picked in occasions my best uh, team over the last 25 years since I started playing and Gorham's definitely in it. I've never seen a better all-round goalkeeper than he is. I think if you just take the old firm matches, <laughs> the points he saved <laughs> against, in fact I think Tommy Burns is at Redden because he had Andy Gorham. So when you think of the, 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 the situation that's happened there, just even with the old firm matches, yeah, we'd, we'd definitely be responsible for 10 or 15 points. He doesn't look a threat, he, he's one of them, if you've seen him walking up the, the street, in the supermarkets, you think, no, he's in a world-class keeper. You think, how can he move? And the saves he was making, bottom, left-hand side, the right side, top corner, he was very fast, very mobile, and uh, like I said, he was an amazing keeper when I was there. I wouldn't play on him any better keepers than that. Well, Gorham has the save right on the line from Van Hoydonk. Donald goes for glory himself, touch under the post. And what a save again from Andy Gordon. Due to such high standards from Andy and the team, Rangers once again had defeated the Celtic Challenge. However, their ancient rivals were determined to stop Rangers from equaling their nine in a row record. They were the only team that was going to stop it. There was no other team going to beat us in the league. I don't mean beat us in the game, I meant to win the league. So it was in their hands. That was always the incentive, because it was Celtic as well. They were the one team that, that could stop us, and they couldn't. They couldn't. Asked me a lot there of Mike Namara, but Cleland is very quick indeed. That's good play by Mike Namara, taking something out, out of very little. Here's Beekhorst. That's a good save by Gordon. Gascoigne might punish them now on the counter attack. Shelting off bit in the back. Low drop, wide for our bats. There's Gascoigne! <laughs> it reaches De Canio, a chance on here. Still De Canio. And Gorham makes the save. Oh, it's brilliant play by Gorham. The next Old Firm encounter was to be the most remarkable match that many fans can remember. Andy was coming back from injury to face a Celtic side who were top of the league. Only a victory would be acceptable to the Rangers fans. Well, that was a crazy, crazy game because I was already sent off. I was up in the stand that night. And uh, that was just an unbelievable game and the, ho the whole thing just went from end to end. Uh, our players, uh, for a spell in the game, tried to play offside for some strange reason, started to push up and try and play offside, which is obviously criminal against like the gas going allowed up, we can lift our head and see what's happened. Uh, Van Bossen had the, the miss, and uh, I was sitting right behind Walter, <laughs> Walter Smith in the dugout that night, and uh, you could just see White telling Ring just looking up into the stand and just couldn't believe what would happen. It's Celtic to challenge Gorham through Van Hoydock. He doesn't really seem to be disguising his intentions. And Gorham got to it with uh, 
outstretched arms and strong fists. I mean, many a game I sat and watched at, at Parkhead or Ibrox, and, and, and I felt for Tommy Burns at the time. I must admit, I mean, I'm sure there were people, you actually went, oh, you know, I can't believe he's done that again. And I remember one game in particular, and Andy had save after save, and these two guys in front of me, you know, and they were everything blinding about how he could possibly do this again to them. It was as if it was something personal, you know, this guy was doing this to these guys, you know. And, and the look in their faces was, you know, it's so hard not to laugh when you're there, but you've just got to say, you know, fine, you know, and carry on with it. And, but it, it, there was, uh, as we've said, it was, it was unbelievable against Celtic. Crock. Donnelly. And lining up in the centre, well played by Gorham, not once but twice. I think it was the difference in vital games, you know, for us, where had we won, maybe one old firm game and over a two-year period we'd have won the league. And uh, Andy Gorham made some unbelievable saves that defy description. Tom going ahead of Tom Boyd. Here he is, Andreas Tom. Goff back pedalling. Tom's past him and Andy Gorham has made the right goalkeeping decision yet again. McInnes. Here's Clellan. Gascoigne took that beautifully. The pass for Loudrup. Kerr comes off his line. Penalty. The most thing I relied on Andy most was I missed a penalty at Celtic. And going up that penalty, I didn't... I was miles away and I missed it. 20 minutes to go. Gascoigne steps up. And Kerr has saved a Paul Gascoigne penalty. a monumental match and we've certainly had one and this is Peter Grant for Celtic Cadet Donnelly and Celtic have got a penalty I was just like numb and I just played the game and um, when they got the penalty I was like shaking inside and thinking oh you know big games these are the biggest games in Scotland and then all that was left was for me to rely on Andy he was the only one on the pitch could have saved me they said when I got to Rangers, you're going to play against Celtic one day, and you won the up with five minutes to go in a big, big game, and they get a penalty, and you save it. You'd be like that. You'd forfeit a month's wages for it. You'd do anything to do that. To me, in that situation where you could stop them from scoring, and you win the game for Rangers in, in the biggest game in the world. So, Gascoigne's already had his penalty saved for Rangers. It's Pierre Van Hoydonk to keep his nerve for Celtic and keep them top of the table. And Gorham has matched Kerr's achievement. So that's probably as, as good as it gets. He's not much better than that. It's not often I get animated that way. But I think with the whole importance of the game, and I suppose it's like scoring the win in the last minute. You know, it's, it, that's, that's my bit of glory and I enjoyed it. And it'll live me forever. The difference between us winning the league or winning all firm games in many occasions was the fact that Andy Gorham made great saves for us that he really shouldn't have been able to make. Um, so from that point of view, it broke my heart because it was so frustrating for us because we got so close uh, only before we got with somebody's fingertips. But uh, no, I never really, never really broke my heart. But in, in the football sense, it did. When he made the save, the penalty, honestly, it, it lumped me through tears and I just wanted to um, go and hug him for the rest of the game, but obviously we had to wait the game finished. And we had a drink in them days for me anyway on it, and it was fantastic. To escape from the pressures of top-class football, Andy lives in Largs, where he enjoys a simpler lifestyle from that normally associated with a football legend. This is a place to come down. Um, I've stayed down here for two years now. It's a place I can get away from it all and relax and listen to these idiots having a go at me. One to my list, we do half. We used to play with Aberdeen about 25 years ago. Currently, my mind room logs. <laughs> Any hassle, he's a boy. Jimmy Five Bellies, Gaza's pal. Well, this is we Andy Ten Bellies. <laughs> <laughs> anything needs doing, we need any bookies lined or anything, the wee man's there to do it. Unfortunately, I lost my licence a couple of years ago. I turned to this man. If this man ever writes a book, Tom, the young chap that drives about all the time for us, picks us up when we need him the most. 
if he ever writes a book, bestseller. <laughs> it's this one. Don't know what he's doing in logs. <laughs> Currently owns the Loudon, unofficially. Rangers number one fan, Toby. And what's the resident Blue Nose? The chef in here is actually a Celtic fan. We just got beat 5-1 last week. And we just had something to eat, and it was absolutely wrong. I don't know he's done to it. I think he's done something to it. But he's disappeared now, so it's all right. We're going to get him after. So we've sat on each other for quite a while, but it was really when he came down to Largs. I moved down to Largs about five years ago. And uh, Andy came down to stay, and we started going out and playing golf. And just really started mucking about together. Uh, I would always come in here and watch the football. I would go for a meal in the house and watch the football there. And uh, just, he's a, he's a great guy. He's a good guy. You know, and I think one of the most important things, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> is <laughs> I can really? slap him every now oh, and again. Really? He deserves a slap oh. now and again. But one of the good things is he's one of the boys. You know, he is really one of the guys. He doesn't put any airs and graces on. And a lot of people don't appreciate the, uh, the things that he does charity-wise as well. And yet, you know, we got a lot of stick about him, about, you know, what he does off the park, and it's a load of rubbish as far as we're concerned. We know that 90% of it's a load of rubbish, but uh, certainly his ability is unanswered. I'm happy with 90%. Okay. <laughs> we were in the pub months ago, and I said, pest of a girl, and try to get into the company all the time. Well, you don't want anything to do with him. I mean, the boys began to get a bit paranoid. This is in Larks. And try to get in the company. I says, here. I said, how do you fancy a couple of days in the sun? I said, oh, she's, where are you going to take me? I said, no, page one, three and five. Get out. Back in the pitch, Rangers continued to power on relentlessly towards their target of nine in a row. And the Celtics rule is five strong. But Albert gets it through! Tim McCluskey getting the wall back. Well, tonight's thrill started with a superb Rangers free kick Van Hoydonk. Oh. Coming up with a splendid effort of his own and flying through the air again was the man in white. Yeah, it's a lovely free kick. Pace and bend and yet again. And Gorham's required. Gorham's there. have done it again. The long fight to win the championship and clinch the ninth title ended at Tanadice in May. It was a milestone in Rangers history, but Andy was injured and missed the match. Well, this cross is a good one, that hits Loudrup! It's a classic from Loudrup! I was actually in Belfast, I listened to it on the radio. Um, just wanted to get away. You don't feel part of it. Although you've done your bit in, in earlier games, you just don't feel part of it. And um, it was my decision. That was one, one regret I had at Rangers that I never, never stayed for that. But again, you made a decision to stand by that. And uh, at the time, I thought it was the right thing to do. But still, I didn't take the shine off of celebrating that one. It was a, a great achievement for the boys. It was a fantastic thing, fantastic thing. Andy's final season at Ibrox had seen the club undergo many changes. Walter Smith announced that he would leave at the end of the season and more foreign players were recruited. But Andy had lost none of his passion for the club. Ten setting himself. Well, for all the years that Rangers have played Celtic, However, at the end of the season, Andy realised he would be leaving Ibrox for the last time, along with many others who were Ibrox greats. There was five or six who knew we were away, and I think the other boys felt, I'm not even going to name them, people are new there. Boys, like I said, they never cried in front of their families before, probably. Hard boys, I'm talking about boys that could, you know, the mm -hmm. emotions aren't easily come by with these lot. Bubbling, not even like a wee tea, like bubbling. And it was it, it stuck in my mind forever. We were all sit, just stood in the reception, five of us, all together. And it was a wee huddle there, it was like a wee huddle. We were all, oh, terrible, terrible night. 
and uh, oh, it hit home that night that we weren't going to come back in and go up the tunnel. <laughs> Copenhagen, home of Copenhagen FC, where Andy hopes to continue his remarkable career. Following in the footsteps of Brian Lauter, he travelled to Denmark for a training session and to discuss a possible signing deal. Nice. <laughs> what do you do for profession? Yeah, unemployed at the moment. Hopefully by tomorrow I'll be employed. Despite the temptation of such a cosmopolitan city, Andy and his associate Jim Fox renounced the bright lights for more cultured entertainments. I've just been in the shops, we've just done a bit of shopping, and I've just found two old friends of mine. I think they'll know they are when you come in. Walter Smith and Archie Knox. Now, this is from when we played Lingby. They made two statues of them both because we did so well. So, you go. that's the first time I've seen Walter and Archie for a long time. Get out. <laughs> this is me now, no apprentice. I've got to lift my own boots up. It's 30 degrees below out there. No, I'm looking forward to it. Um, be nice to see Brian again after this time, like I said. I just want to get out and start playing again. Ice. <laughs> Training pitch, ice, game off. Training cancelled. Time's this. After the reunion was over, it was down to business. When Andy trained with Michael Steensgaard, who had just signed for Southampton, inspecting Andy was Danish goalkeeping coach Ollie Quist. Although he hadn't trained for three weeks, Andy showed that he'd lost none of his ability despite the freezing temperatures. It's okay. It's the first thing I've done for three weeks, so. But. Yeah, a lot different to what I'm used to, but it's all part of learning. You can put everything together. Well, I didn't know I was coming to Iceland. I thought I was coming to Denmark. Due to the weather conditions, Andy had to train on unfamiliar surfaces with the Copenhagen team. But that didn't hinder his performance. I've ever been on a pitch, apart from uh, we played Czesky in Moscow and Bochum. And we've got a goalkeeping coach that's obviously done different things than I'm used to. I thought it was Colin Jackson at one point and jumping over the hurdles. But it's different, I've enjoyed it. And uh, hopefully done enough to, to try and give him a good impression. Although no contracts have been signed, in January, when the Danish clubs start training after the winter break, Andy will join them for pre-season training. Clearly, Andy's career is far from over. And no matter where his outstanding talent lead him, he will always be remembered by the loyal Rangers fans, not only as a legend, but simply as the goalie. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind Gonna be a bright, sunshiny day